All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining on this wonderful Friday morning. Every Friday is a blessing. So um, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'll hop into it. So uh, actually, this. So I've been meditating on Isaiah 43 um, as one of the chapters that I'm trying to just be consistent and just focusing on and reading and just wanting to build capacity um, in terms of meditating on the word of God and, you know, really thinking about it and allowing the Holy Spirit to give deeper revelation and whatnot. But this morning he brought up um, a portion of that scripture that is typically spoken of and um, the scripture is Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. And it was interesting because I was like, okay, Lord, well, you know, I've read this many times. And, you know, it, it, oftentimes, you know, everybody has a word using Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. And so I'm going to read the Amplified Version. And then I'll also read the ESV Version. So the Amplified Version says, do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Now this is um, the Lord talking to the Israelites. And Isaiah 43 is basically a heavy a heavy chapter talking about the restoration and the, and the uh, redemption of the Israelites. And so it is the Lord just kind of telling the Israelites what he will do for them um, upon, you know, them being rescued from, you know, their sins and things. Because it was like an ongoing cycle when it came to the Israelites um, because they would have these moments of, you know, they would cry out for the Lord. He would come deliver them. Then they would fall into sin. And then um, then there would be a consequence and they would cry out for him again. And so this is him just talking about that redemption piece and that restoration piece that he has um, in store for him, in store for them. And so the English Standard Version, it reads, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so I thought that stood out to me, this version, because of the word choice that they use, because they use the word choice, um, perceive. And so I was looking at the actual word, because to me that was very distinct when he says, do you not perceive it? And so when you go back and you look at um, the different meanings of the word because i use a, a bible software called logos to help me when it comes to like studying certain words um and it says perceive means to know like to cognitively know and i found that interesting for you know the lord to ask that question like behold i am doing a new, a new thing now it springs forth do you not perceive it and it just made me ponder upon that. I was like, Holy Spirit, because even now, it's one of those things where you just have a, a sense and an unction that the Holy Spirit, he is doing new things even now. Um, and I just kept hearing, but do you not perceive it? And I was like, well, Holy Spirit, you know, what I don't know, help me to know. Help me to perceive it. And I found that to be something you know, that I've even gotten to the habit of being like, okay, Holy Spirit, every day, like, whatever you do, let me perceive what you are doing. Um, let me recognize it. Let me see it. Let me not overlook it because I'm distracted by what I see in the natural. Help, like, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear, and help me to recognize what's happening. Help me to know, to, you know, notice and to understand what is happening in this season and so I just wanted to highlight that because 
it's very easy to to kind of get I don't want to say complacent but to get so used to the the norms of every day that we don't press into what has God said he's going to do and a lot of times when you read the word of God, he's giving a lot of foresight through the prophets. He's saying, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And so when he says things like, do you not perceive it? It's one of those things where it's like, you have to stretch, you have to stretch your mind. You have to allow yourself to see beyond the natural realm to see in the spiritual realm, to recognize what he's doing. And so one of my, one of my biggest prayer points for us is that we are able to see through our spiritual eyes um, because there's a lot happening in the natural, but it's very easy for us to get distracted. And then you know where you can you can miss what he's trying to do. Not saying he won't continue to move on your behalf, but there may be certain things that he's like, I need you to catch this in the spirit. So you can focus, so you can, so you can recognize it. And honestly, it brings me more peace thinking about what he said he's going to do from and what he's doing in the spiritual side versus being so focused on what's happening on the natural. Cause sometimes what's happening in the natural can get you discouraged. It can get you distracted. It can make you feel like, well, God, you said this, but I'm not seeing this. So I guess you're not going to do that. And honestly, that's where we can easily make a mistake because then we start doubting and questioning. And we know that that just that's what the enemy wants because he doesn't want us to have the faith because faith is needed in order for God to actually come through with what he said he would do. And so I just want us to be very cognizant, very intentional you know, about going to the Father and saying, Father, help me to perceive what you are doing in this season. And it doesn't have to be limited to your life. It can be for the your surroundings, your environment, you know, your workspaces, your school spaces, in your family. Father, help me to perceive what you are doing in these spaces. You know, help me to not get distracted by what's happening in the natural. Help me to see how you are lining up things. And, and even when he talks about in verse 18, when he said, remember not the former things, nor consider the old, the things of the old, that's important because sometimes we can get so fixated on what has happened in the past, um, that we can't allow ourselves to see what he's trying to do and going even further. Like, yes, the second half of 19 says, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then 20 says, the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. Verse 21, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. And so even with that, him highlighting the fact that he has the capacity to do all these things that in our own natural eye, we're like, what? That's not possible. You know, the fact that he kept saying it twice, he kept saying he would make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. In the second part, he says, I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And what stood out to me the most was that rivers in the desert, because I've lived in the desert uh, when I lived in the UAE. And when you're, when you're there, it's literally nothing but but sand. And I oftentimes think about, you know, even the first people who were part of the United Arab Emirates and how they literally, you know, I applaud them for taking the vision that they got and building out of sand, out of dust, out of nothing. And seeing how, like, when you look around, there are no wells, there's just sand. Like there's absolutely nothing. And when you're in that type of environment and you're looking around and you're like, whoa, like, God, there is absolutely nothing out here. How could people survive? And the fact that he said rivers in the desert, he makes a way out of no way. He has the capacity. I mean, especially he is the creator. 
So he has the ability to to create things. Even today, he has the ability to create things. And I think sometimes we can get so used to what he's done before. We can get so used to what we see that sometimes our mind can't perceive or process that, guess what? God wants to do something much bigger, much different, much greater, and much new, and much more new than what we've ever experienced. And so I'm I'm really praying that God expand our thinking and help us not to box him in and that we continue to have faith, that we even have a greater faith for what he's doing because we don't want to be our own stumbling block. And I know he's, he keeps telling me that, like, don't be your own stumbling block, either through your words, by what you say, you know, by what you say, by what you allowing your mind what you start thinking and rehearsing in your mind and i'm like holy spirit let me not be my own stumbling block help me to to maintain the faith that you have called me to have help me to see from the spiritual realm the things that you desire to do the supernatural things that you desire to do and so i just want to challenge us even as you go through your day um to meditate on that um, and you can do a, a deeper word study. If you don't have Logos, you can use the uh, Blue Letter Bible app. You can use um, Bible study tools. And you can delve deeper into these words because to know something, you know, it's like you have an awareness, like you know it as a fact. And so that's how I want to believe and the things that God has said, I want to know it as a fact. I want to know as a fact, God, yes, you will do what you say you will do. And that will require me seeing from a spiritual perspective and not a natural. Because if I look at the natural, my brain is going to be like, Lord, I ain't seeing it yet. And then you start questioning and doubting. But right now, I, it's just I, it's just a, a, a heightening within me like God is like I need you to hold on tight and to believe and to know that I am the God that I said I am and I am the God of supernatural ability I am the omniscient one I can do I know all things he is he can do all things and so to trust what he has said and so I want us to be thinking about that throughout our day as we're praying, praying for our mind, praying that we allow the Holy Spirit to, to just remove anything that is functioning as a hindrance to our ability to believe him for what he said he is going to do. And so right now, um, we're going to start praying. If you do have any prayer requests that you weren't able to send in, you can put it in the chat and, um, Sometimes I see it, sometimes I don't, because I'm, I'm one of those people, I still pray with my eyes closed sometimes. So so um, we're going to take some time and just pray in the spirit, and um, and you can come off mute, because I still believe in there is power in unity when we are all on one accord, and what you don't realize is that when we're in an environment where we're allowing the Holy Spirit to, to speak and to have his way, it activates the Holy Spirit and other people. And so on these calls, when we are praying in the spirit, it's not just for us to say, oh, I can pray in the spirit, but there's an activation taking place. There is a there is a, a oneness that we come into, not just with each other, but also with God. And that begins to, to stir something in other people. Because one thing I, I want more people to understand is that when you are in the right environment, it helps to build something. It helps to awaken something. So when you are in prophetic environments, the Holy Spirit can begin to speak to you. So even though you're on this prayer call and you hear my voice, the Holy Spirit can speak to you as well. And so that's why I encourage people have something to take a note with because the Holy Spirit can speak to you even while we're, we can just be praying in the spirit or I could be praying the Holy Spirit can just start downloading stuff to you so please understand that our prayers are something that we engage in together it's not one of those spectator situations it's not just you trying to hear what I gotta say no it's about you engaging with the Holy Spirit and partnering with me in order for the Holy Spirit to begin to download 
things that he needs you specifically to hear. So epe kadodo ko she he pe kadare ko she kare abo ko she he pe ke de ko she kare abo ko she kare a he ke do ko she kare a epe ke do ko she kare a epe ko she epe kadodo ko she kare abo ko she kare abo ko she kare a epe ke do ko she kare abo ko she kare abo ko she epe kadodo ko she kare abo ko she kare abo ko she epe kadodo ko she kare abo ko Shot <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, you are so worthy. Lord God, we come before you just honoring the fact first that we are so privileged and grateful and thankful, Lord God, for the honor to come before you on one accord and to just praise your holy name, Lord God. Father God, we thank you that you are the one true living God. You are the great I am. You are the alpha and omega. You are the beginning and the end. Father God, thank you for being our Jehovah Jireh, Lord God, our Jehovah Nisi, Lord God. Thank you for being Elohim, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you that you are Adonai. You are Lord of our lives, Lord God. And even now, Lord, we lay down anything that is not of you, Lord God, even if it seems good. Good, Lord, we lay it at your feet and we surrender it. Lord, we cast every single burden and care upon you, Lord God. And in this moment, Lord, we take up your yoke and your burden because your yoke is easy and your burden is light, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you just for your, your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we don't suffer the full extent of the consequences Lord, of our sin, Lord God. We thank you that we experience being justified. We thank you that we experience your sanctification, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you that despite us still having to be in our human nature, Lord, that you have freed us from the power of sin, that we don't have to live a life where sin controls us and where we don't have the capacity to overcome sin and to choose differently, Lord God. So, Father God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us, that he turns our heart, that he shifts our, our desires Father God, I thank you that in this season, Lord, that we come before you, Lord, that you've torn the veil. We can come directly to you, Lord. Father, I pray that you begin to search our hearts, Lord God, that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit within us, Heavenly Father. Lord God, let us not linger with anything that is not of you, Heavenly Father. Let us not get complacent with our sin or the, the things that lead to sin, Heavenly Father. Lord, give us an unction to be proactive. Let us not be complacent. Let us not get into a space of where we allow ourselves to engage with things through, through sight or through hearing. Things that will draw us further and further away from you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord, forgive us, Heavenly Father, for allowing ourselves to get too close to the edge, Heavenly Father, where we could fall into sin, where we could where we can end up doing what is not of you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, forgive us for engaging in any conversations. Forgive us for allowing any thoughts. Forgive us for watching anything, for ingesting any music, Lord God, that does not glorify you, Heavenly Father. 
Father God, help us to not be prideful and to not think that we have the capacity to to do things out of our own flesh. Our flesh does not desire to serve you. But Lord, we have to function through the Holy Spirit. So Lord, just let the Holy Spirit begin to consume and saturate our hearts. Father God, give us a hatred for the things that you hate. Not people, because you don't hate people. But Lord, the things, the sin that you hate, Lord, help us to have a hatred for those things, Lord God. Help us to not be passive. Help us to not think, well, it doesn't bother me or it doesn't affect me directly. Because Father, what we are seeing is that things that we let go, things that we overlook, things that we allowed our natural eye to get so, no, no, that we allow to normalize that it is now impacting the future. Lord, it's impacting our children. It's impacting our livelihood. It's impacting the, the policies and things that are in our workplaces. So Lord, I pray that you call up your children, Lord God. Call up your children to be steadfast, to be stern and to be firm, Lord God that we would be vocal according to the things of your word, that we would boldly declare the things that you love, that we would boldly demonstrate and be examples, Lord God, of what you love, Heavenly Father. Father God, and if there is anything within us, Heavenly Father, challenge us, Heavenly Father, to just pause and ponder and reflect and to repent on those things, Lord God. That we have a uh, that we have done, Heavenly Father, the, the blatant sin that we have engaged in, Heavenly Father, Lord, we repent. Every day we should be repenting. Every day, Lord God. Let us not get complacent. Let us not get haughty. Let us not get prideful. Let us not get arrogant. Let us not think we can do things out of our own strength. But Lord, let us be in remembrance of the fact that we are completely submitted and dependent upon you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I thank you that in this season you have been purifying and purging us, Lord God, in this whole month, Heavenly Father. And I thank you, Lord God, because the purging and the pruning and the purification, it is necessary, Lord, for where you are taking us. Lord, it has been a challenge. There have been many battles and there have been many mistakes made. But Father God, because you are merciful and you are kind, Lord God, you have helped us to overcome. You have helped us to recognize our wrongs and you have given us multiple chances to do things according to your will and your way. And even now, Lord God, in these last few days of May, Heavenly Father, if there is anybody who is still just struggling, Father, I pray that you will reignite their hope and just help them to reset even now on this call, Lord God. Father God, let none of us go into June the same way we came into May, Lord God. Father, you are calling us higher, Heavenly Father. You are calling, there's a level that you desire for us to be at, Heavenly Father, because you desire to utilize us in a greater capacity. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let us relinquish and release anything, even if it's a desire, if it's a mindset, if it's a, a, a an idea that we thought we made. Father, if you are telling us you want to do something new, help us to know it. Help us to perceive it, Heavenly Father. Let us not be our own stumbling blocks in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. In fact, Lord, let us carry and keep on the mind of Christ, Lord. Help us to keep on the mind of the Holy Spirit that we see and we hear according to your eyes and your ears that we would not allow ourselves to get so fixated on things that we think should happen in a way that we think it should happen. But let us trust, Heavenly Father, that you, the God who can put rivers in the desert, who makes a way out of no way, you are the almighty Alpha and Omega. You can do all things, Lord God. You are omnipotent. You are all powerful. So you have the capacity to do anything beyond what our minds can even think, Lord God. So, Lord, help us to recognize the times of the season, Lord God. Help us to recognize what you are doing in the season. We may not know it. We may not know exactly how you're going to do it. But Lord, there is a knowing that you desire for us to have through trust. You desire for us to trust you. 
based upon your word, who you have said you are, who you have shown yourself to be, who you continue to be in our lives. Lord, you need us to hold tightly on that. For that is what draws us closer to you. It is your word that builds our trust in you, Heavenly Father. So it is it is by hearing your word that we our faith is increased in you. So, Father God, even with that, Lord, we repent for the times that we did not engage with your word consistently and we did not engage with your word the way that you desired for us to do it, Lord God. Father God, give us a fervency and a consistency and a commitment and a determination and a discipline to be in your word every single day, every day. Lord, let us not be like the believers who, who are on milk who only go to church on Sunday, who only who don't even open their Bible, who just listen to the word and go on about their day. Father God, you are calling us up higher. So Father God, help us even now, Holy Spirit, begin to speak to us. What is it that you would have us to meditate on in your word? Even today, throughout the day, Lord, just begin to highlight scriptures, highlight um, part excerpts of your word. Father God, challenge us, Heavenly Father, to just stop. Kind of like what we used to do in school, that drop everything and read. Lord, let us drop everything and read your word. Father, let us not be in that space, Lord God, where we treat you as a second option, as second hand, Lord, we need to make you priority in our lives, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus for treating you like an option, for treating you as a second hand, Lord God. When you are first, you are number one in our lives, Lord God. We make you a priority, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I pray that you begin to dismantle and destroy idols, Heavenly Father. Every idol that tries to linger within the depths of our hearts, Lord, dismantle and destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Let us not make ministry an idol. Let us not make people an idol. Let us not make ideas an idol. Let us not make the promises of God an idol. Father God, let us not make visions and dreams and giftings and talents and idol father none of it matters compared to you lord god you are number one heavenly father so heavenly father teach us to seek you first lord god teach us to make you a priority teach us to grow in our intimacy and our fellowship with you heavenly father let us not squander our 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 privilege to come before you, Lord, as, as sons and daughters, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I thank you that in this season you are teaching us sonship, Lord God. You are teaching us the importance of, of intimacy, Heavenly Father. Lord, take us back to that place, Lord, where we just want to be one with you, where we just want to fellowship with you, where it doesn't feel like a burden, but Lord God, our love for you ignites a fire and desire for us to obey you with joy, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, I thank you that in this season, you are stretching us, Heavenly Father. You are challenging us in the mighty name of Jesus to go deeper into you. And through us going deeper into you, Lord God, you are increasing our faith. You are increasing our trust. You are increasing our knowing of who you are, of what you will do, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, I thank you for every single person who was listening to this call, whether live or listening to the replay, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking to our, our, our souls, Lord God, that you are speaking to our spirits, Lord God, that you are shifting things, Heavenly Father. You are shifting our mind, will, and emotions, and you are bringing them into subjection of the Holy Spirit. Father God, in fact, Lord, I pray over our minds, Lord, Hallelujah. Father God, I break, I break off anything that is not of you, Lord. Every single negative scenario, every single negative um, delay or disappointment, Father God, we crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. We let your Holy Spirit fire burn it away, Heavenly Father, that we would not allow it to linger and replay over and over in our minds. In fact, Lord, shut the mouth of the enemy. That is not of God. That is the enemy to try to keep us in the space of rehearsing the past and things that have not happened and people who have disappointed us and people who have hurt us. Lord, we break it off in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And we declare and decree that we have the mind of Christ, that we have a renewed and transformed mind. 
and that we think on things that are lovely. We think on things that are pure. We think on things that are holy. We think on the good things of you, Lord God. We think on what you have said you would do, Lord God. And we think on it without doubting, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray over our emotions, Lord. Let our emotions not drive us, Lord God. We know that there's, you have not once told us to allow our emotions to lead us in anything that we do, Heavenly Father. For our emotions are tied to our heart and oftentimes our heart can be deceptive if we are not, if it is not submitted to the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we bring it into subjection to you, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, there is nothing wrong with having an emotion, but it cannot drive us in our decisions. Lord, we have a sound mind. And even thinking back to your word, the heart and the mind you use synonymously, Lord God. So they are one. So, Father God, make sure our heart and our minds are in alignment with you, Lord God. They are one accord with you, Lord so yes, Lord, we receive the fact that we declare and decree that we have a sound mind, that Lord, we have allowed your love to saturate our heart and our mind, Lord God, that it is only through your love, Heavenly Father, that we then can begin to see your love and we can love ourselves and we can love others, Lord God. And when we love others, it's not just in word, but it's also in deed. When we love ourselves, it's not just in word, but it's also in deed. When we love you, it's not just in word, it's also in deed. So Father God, let us not just be hearers, let us not just be speakers of your word, but let us be doers of your word in every aspect, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, I pray against uh, false doctrines, Lord God. Father God, let us unlearn every false doctrine, every false teaching, every uh, religious tradition that was that was taught to us, Lord, out of man's choice, but not your word. Father God, help us to unlearn the things, Lord, that we've learned from these, even with denominations, Lord God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, there is a rectifying that is coming in the body of Christ. Lord, we cry out to you and we ask for forgiveness and we repent for the times that we have mandated man-made opinions and put, projected them on people as if they were your word. Father God, help us to allow the Holy Spirit to, to help us to rightly divide your word, divide your word, Heavenly Father, that we would study your word with understanding from the Holy Spirit, that we would have interpretation from the Holy Spirit, that we would discern what you are truly saying in your word, that we would be intentional about studying your word, Heavenly Father. Father God, forgive us for the many believers of Christ that 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 left the actual church because they, they were given all these rules and these regulations that we're not in alignment with your word. Lord God, yes, you have a standard. There are things that you expect us to do. There are things that you, you have mandated us to do. There are, you have statutes, you have precepts, you have commandments that we are to follow. But Lord God, there are so many other things that out of the greed of man, out of the sin of man that have been infused into the, into churches and into the body of Christ and Lord, we know you are doing a rectifying of those things. You are there's an awakening taking place, Lord God. So, Lord, even believe every believer and following of Christ, even if you are on the call, if there are things that you have allowed to become mandated as God's word when it was just man, Father, I just pray that you begin to break it in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, whatever burden we carried, whatever barriers that we have, because we allowed those things to become, to become like a commandment when it was not of you, Father God, just begin to destroy and dismantle it, Lord God. Do not let us leave this month, Heavenly Father, the same way, Lord. Let there be a quick supernatural work of healing, of renewal, rejuvenation, of realignment, Father God. There is a newness you desire to do in this next coming month, Heavenly Father. 
So, Lord, even in these last days, if you call any of us or if you tell any of us to continue or to begin fasting and seeking your face and allowing you to speak, Father God, let us be obedient because there is something, Father God, that you need us to to do and to get in this month that will prepare us for the next Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I thank you in advance. I thank you for the, the healing that is taking place. I thank you for the restoration. I thank you for the deliverance, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that we will not perish for lack of knowledge, Lord God. I thank you for breaking our minds off of ignorance, Lord. I thank you that we are not in a people of ignorance, that we choose to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, to educate us, to inform us on the things of you, Lord God. Father, let us not get complacent with your word. It doesn't matter if we've read the chapter before. It doesn't matter if we read the verse before. We allow the Holy Spirit to give new revelation at all times, to give new insight, to give greater understanding in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father God, I pray over the mind, Heavenly Father, that is prideful and thinks they know it all, Lord God. Father God, humble us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, even in all my degrees, Lord, let me not get into a space of where I think I know it all, Lord God. Let me not get into a space of where I don't allow myself to remain teachable to the Holy Spirit or to those you send who are who are who rightly divide your word and who does and who have been chosen to impart your word, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, for all of us, Lord. Forgive us for any time that we thought, oh, I know this, or I don't need to, or I'm or I'm too good, or I'm above that. Father God, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We repent for the times that we tr we thought that you couldn't speak through people who we thought were not mature enough or who were who had been quote unquote saved as long as us or in the church as long as us. Father God, we bind those mindsets in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we know that you have the ability to use anyone, Lord, at the rate that you desire to use them, Lord. So Lord, let us not think it seems strange, Heavenly Father, when you are utilizing individuals and you are utilizing um, people and voices, Lord God, that may not have been the most churched, that may not have been the in that may not have been a follower of Christ for the longest, that may not be the oldest, that may be the youngest. Father God, let us be open to who you want to use and how you desire to use them, Lord God. Lord, I pray for our youth. I pray for our children. I pray for our parents, Lord God. Father, open the eyes of our parents and help our parents to not be ignorant to the devices of the enemy. Lord, I pray that you help our parents to have awareness and open eyes to be discerning, to be discerning of our children, of their friends, of the environments that they are allowed to be in. Father God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus to not get complacent, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. There's so much there's so much happening to attack our children, to confuse our children, Lord God. But Lord, I thank you that you are placing a, a, a heightened sense of knowing and awareness among our children, Lord, among our communities, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you continue to raise up the voices of your people, Heavenly Father, that we would not allow ourselves to remain silent anymore. That, Lord, whatever room we have, whatever space we're in, Lord God, help us to use our, our voice, Lord. I break off the muzzle in the mighty name of Jesus. Every muzzle that has been placed on every single person out of fear, out of the enemy, Lord, we break it off in the name of Jesus. And we declare and decree that we will utilize our voice in the area that you have called us to use it, Lord God. And we will use it with the authority of the Holy Spirit. And we will not draw back, Lord God. Father God, I pray for that you increase a boldness and a courage and a strength within each and every one of us, Lord God, that we would speak against the things that are against you, Heavenly Father, that we would promote the things that are of you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, you begin to utilize us, Heavenly Father, that we would be the mouthpiece for you, that we would be the messengers for you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, we would not limit our 
our use, Heavenly Father, to a title, but we will understand that the only title that matters is the fact that we are children of God. So once we accept that title, there's a responsibility that we have on this earth as being the chosen ones, Lord, to have dominion over the things of the, over every creation, Heavenly Father. So Lord, help us to get it back in our rightful position. Help us to function with the confidence in you, Lord God, that you initially placed inside of us when you created Adam, Lord, and Eve. Father God, help us, Lord God, to reframe our thinking. Let it be rewired, Heavenly Father. Lord God, I thank you that you are filling us with a fire and a desire, Lord God, to do things according to your will. There is a boldness, Lord, that is stirring even now. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for how you are building up each and every person, Lord God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are breaking off even as condemnation. All forms of condemnation, we break it off in the mighty name of Jesus. All forms of legalism, Lord. All forms of ungodly judgment, Heavenly Father. Father God, I pray for those who are maturing, who are growing in the faith, Lord. And I pray that you help them maintain the joy of the Lord, Heavenly Father. I pray that as we continue to fellowship with you, Lord, that we begin to have a joy. Lord God, let us not fall into the trap of comparing ourselves and thinking that we we make up we do so many things out of our own might lord god that we lose the joy that comes with serving you and loving you and loving the and loving your people lord god lord i thank you that you are doing the hard work in us lord i thank you that you are healing our mind i thank you lord that you are giving us the ability to step out on faith lord that you are giving us the ability to believe you for the new, that you are giving us the ability to believe you beyond what we see in the natural, Lord God. Lord, we will perceive it. We do perceive it, Lord God. We know that you are doing above and beyond anything that we can ask or think, Heavenly Father. Lord God, help us to remember that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts, Heavenly Father. And we repent for ever thinking that we know it all or forever thinking that we have control of everything or forever thinking that we know above you, Lord God. We repent in the mighty name of Jesus and we ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to help us to put whatever needs to be put in place that we would not sin against you, Lord God. Lord, let us be intentional about allowing the Holy Spirit to show us what needs to be continue what needs to be started what needs to be stopped so that way we can be in right standing with you heavenly father lord god we don't use the word repentance loosely lord we want to see change we want to change lord god we want to surrender those things and those habits and those thoughts and mindsets and words lord god that we have allowed to to linger within our lives heavenly father Lord, I thank you for the supernatural works that you are doing, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us even balance, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you that you are teaching us how to function practically in the human form while functioning with a, with a, a supernatural spiritual mind of you, Heavenly Father. I thank you that you are heightening our discernment. I thank you you're heightening our ability to see and to recognize things, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, that there is an awareness that you have given us through the Holy Spirit. And Father God, I pray that you teach us, Lord. I know there are a lot of times when new believers come into the body of Christ and there is a, a, a moment, a struggle of understanding, well, how do I function for Christ and how without um, allowing myself to be influenced? Father God, help us to not function out of fear. Father God, help us to not do things out of fear because when we do things out of fear, it takes away from what you actually want us to do. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you release, that you help us to be released from that fear of making mistakes, that fear of sinning, that fear of the enemy taking control. Lord God, we break all those fears. We break off the spirit of fear altogether, Heavenly Father, and we cast it down into the abyss and we declare and decree, Heavenly Father, it has no hold on us, Lord God. You have given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, Heavenly Father. 
So I pray that we intentionally begin to declare and decree that over our lives, that you've given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. Father God, help us, Lord, to not go to two extremes, Lord, where we try to dismiss the spiritual aspect of you, Lord God, or the other extreme of where we try to dismiss the fact that we are in a natural form, Lord God. Lord, you, if we keep trusting you, you will lead and guide us in how we should function in our everyday life, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, I thank you that you are teaching us how to coexist, Heavenly Father, not how to function according to the world, but how to be in the world, but not of the world. So Lord God, I just pray that you begin to help your children in that capacity, Lord. Help us because there are a lot of people who are struggling because they've been in churches and places and they've heard things, been taught things and seen things. But Lord, let us get back to the basics of your word. What have you said? What have you shown us, Heavenly Father? So Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in this time. I thank you for what you're doing in this season. I thank you, Lord God, that even in this month, Lord, I'm still believing for your healing power to saturate your children, Lord, that there will be physical healing. There will be emotional healing. There will be mental healing. Hallelujah, Lord God. There will be physical. There will be financial healing, Lord God. Father, let there be relational healing, Lord. Let every offense, Lord God, that has tried to paralyze people from moving forward and from connecting with other people and from being their best self in in relationships of all levels. Father God, I break off the spirit of offense, Lord God. I break off the spirit of jealousy, Lord. Father, we cancel the spirit of jealousy. It has infiltrated the body of Christ so subtly, Lord God. Help us, Heavenly Father, to recognize we are not in competition with each other, that we are all called to do things according to your will and your way. Therefore, there is no need for us to covet or to be jealous or to envy anybody, Lord God. So, Father God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that we can be the best representatives for Christ, Because we do not live in jealousy, Lord God. We don't live in comparison, Lord. In fact, Lord, I pray that there is a a reignited fire to just support and love each other and to pour into each other and to encourage each other and pray for each other, Lord God. And if we are within proximity, to go out and support each other, Heavenly Father. Lord, let us not get into this mindset or get fixated on ourselves, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray for mentors, Lord. If we mentor in any capacity, let us not have a jealous spirit. Lord, I break off the spirit of Saul. Hallelujah, Lord. We break off every Saul spirit that turned against a mentee or tried or got jealous of those they are supposed to support and build. Father, we cancel in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we declare and decree, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, you are sending Naomi's, that you are sending Mordecai's, that you are sending the Elizabeth's, Lord God. You are sending the Eli's and Elijah's, Lord God, who will lead, who will serve as mentors, who will teach, who will grow, and who will do it without being jealous, Lord God. Father God, and if we have ever held back something out of jealousy or because we thought somebody was going to be bigger than us or whatever, Lord, we repent, Lord. We repent on the body of Christ for allowing that to infiltrate the churches, Lord God. Father, I pray for our leaders, Heavenly Father. Teach our leaders, Lord, to remain submitted to you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that we will all function in the way that you have called us to function, that we would not envy any giftings, we would not envy any callings of anybody, Lord God, for we do not understand the sacrifice that comes with what you call each of us to, Lord God. Father God, you are teaching us, Heavenly Father, you have afforded each of us a different level of functioning and gifting and capacity, Lord God. Let us be happy and content with where you have us and what you have for us, Lord God. Let us not get to a place, Heavenly Father, where we compare, but because our eyes in the natural will deceive us, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I thank you that in the season you are maturing us as believers in Christ. You are helping us, Heavenly Father, to not be 
haughty and prideful, Heavenly Father, but to walk in humility, Lord. As you are building a knowing within each of us, Lord God, you are teaching us to know, but to be teachable. You're teaching us to be confident, but to remain teachable, to remain a student, to understand that you are omniscient, you are all knowing. So there is always more for us to learn, Heavenly Father. Lord God, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, for just your heart. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are saturating our heart with your heart, Heavenly Father, that we will be representatives to you, Heavenly Father, each and every place that we go, Lord God. I thank you that you are disciplining us, Lord, that our bodies are cleansed and purified, Lord God, that your healing power has saturated us, Lord God. I thank you that we do not live off of what we see, but we live off of what you, what you say and what your word says, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I pray for our families. Lord, you are trying to restore the family function, the family structure. So, Lord God, we pray against every demonic force that tries to come against our families, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we pray that your angels begin to just cover our families all together, Lord. Lord, let us be in proxy for our family members, Lord God. Let us continue to intercede for our family members, Heavenly Father, that, that because of our relationship with you, they too will be saved. They too will come to the knowledge of who you are as our Lord and Savior, Lord God. They too will accept you, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, because of our choice to choose you, Heavenly Father, our lineages will be transformed forever, Lord God. That, Father, things that our fathers and mothers and grandparents did before us, Lord God, that it has ended, it is broken, and it will not continue and on in our lineage, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that you, you are giving us awareness of things, Heavenly Father. You're helping us to see the patterns, Lord God, the bad habits that we may have been doing, Lord, thinking it was normal. Lord, you are highlighting it for a reason because you need us to renounce it, Lord God. So, Lord, even now we take a moment to renounce every ungodly pattern, every ungodly curse, every ungodly covenant, every ungodly altar that was set up or established or created by those who came before us, Heavenly Father. Lord God, even those things that we allow to come into our lives, Heavenly Father, through sin, Lord, we renounce it in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Lord God, and we declare and decree, Lord, that you are purifying our, our lineage, that the blood of Jesus, Lord, is covering us, is covering our lineage, Lord God, is covering um, our sin, Lord God. You are cleansing and purifying us with your blood, Holy Spirit. We have, we thank you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Let us not take it for granted, Lord God. Lord, we just surrender and we praise your holy name. Father God, you are such a good father, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the testimony of Christ. We thank you that Christ didn't just come, but he lived, he died, and he rose again, and he promised us eternal life. So, Lord, we thank you for eternal life. Lord, let us not live for this time on this earth, but let us live knowing that we are having eternity with you, Lord God, that we will experience a greater life beyond our time here on this earth, Lord God. So, Lord, I, I pray for a hedge of protection over each and every one of us, Lord, wherever we go, whether it be to work, whether it be to the store, Lord God, I thank you that you are protecting our vehicles, I thank you that you are protecting us, that you are protecting our homes, our apartments, Lord God. I thank you that you are protecting our families, Lord God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are, you are, show, you are showing, you are utilizing us, Lord God, to show what it means to truly love and honor and serve you, Lord God. Father God, they, the world does not even understand half of it, Lord. But Lord, I thank you that you are opening the eyes of the lost. And that you are bringing back those, Lord, who have turned away out of hurt and pain. I thank you that there is an unlearning taking place in your children. Lord God, people who have been a part of cults, Lord, we break off those, those ungodly mindsets, those legalistic mindsets. We cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of legalism that has infiltrated the hearts and minds of people, Lord. We break it off in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
And we declare and decree, Lord, that there is a freedom that we will experience in you. There's a freedom that those who have who have strayed away, that prodigals, Lord, they would come back and be drawn to you, Lord God. That they would remember the times in their childhood, Heavenly Father, when they knew your word, when they decreed and declared your word. Lord, bring it back to their remembrance, Lord. Father, we thank you that the increase is coming, Lord. They are ready our churches, Lord. Ready our pastors, Lord God. Ready our teachers. Ready the apostles, the evangelists, and the prophets, Lord. Let us all function according to the role that you have asked of us, Lord God. And let us not dismiss being a child of God. Father God, help us to remember that just because we don't function in the office, it doesn't mean we don't have a function. So Lord, let us do what we are called to do on this earth for the kingdom of God, Heavenly Father, for the body of Christ, Lord God. There is no child of God who doesn't have a role in the actual church building, Lord God. So Lord, I pray that we break off that mindset of division that we want to say, oh, I'm only called to the marketplace. No, Lord God, you have called us all to function for the church. And then it is an extension for us to go out in the world. Lord, even if we are just a member, Lord God, you are creating opportunities for us to be in fellowship, to pour into people, to love on people, to have community. So Lord God, help us to understand we may not be in the choir, we may not be on the media team, but even as a member of a church, that there is a position that you have for us to reflect you, to be the light for someone, to speak kindly to someone who is attending for the first time. Lord, you need us to be used, Lord God, to help build people, Lord God, to help support people, Heavenly Father, to have community, Lord Jesus. So Lord, help us to not limit the way you desire to use us because it doesn't look a certain way, Lord God. Father God, break the lines, Lord God. Break the division, Lord God. Let there not be a, a divider, Heavenly Father, that causes us to choose one thing over the other. Lord, let us, we, you created us. We, you are multifaceted, Lord. So you created us to be multifaceted, Heavenly Father. So Lord, let us walk in who you designed us to be in with, let us walk in the character, the nature, the gifting, the skills, the talents, boldly. Let us walk in the love of you all day, every day, everywhere, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I thank you that you have helped us to overcome our battles. Father God, there have been multiple attacks on your children, Lord God. But Lord, we declare and decree, Lord, that every person functioning with the Haman spirit has already destroyed themselves in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, I, Lord God, if they do not repent and surrender and come into the um, and come into submission to the Holy Spirit, then Father God, you will deal with them. But Lord, as for us, Lord, who have been attacked, Lord, we thank you that there is recompense. Recompense. We thank you that you are handling the situation. Lord, keep our hearts pure. Help us to not step outside your character. Help us to not turn and be manipulative just like those people have been. Lord God, keep us in a pure light. Keep our hearts clean, Heavenly Father, that we would continue to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. Lord, we know you will rectify every single offense, every single attack, anything that was said and done against our name for any of your children. You are handling it, Lord God, but we will remain consistent. We will remain steadfast. We remain planted in your word and we will continue to be a reflection of you, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you for the promotions that are coming. I thank you for the increase that is coming. I thank you for the new things, the new people, the new experiences, the new opportunities that are coming to your children, Heavenly Father. Father God, as your word says, Lord, do you not perceive it? Lord, we perceive it. We perceive it, Lord God. We know it to be true. We know it is coming. We don't know how, but we know it is coming, Lord. So we thank you and we praise your holy name, giving you all the honor and the glory. And we seal every single prayer with the blood of Jesus, even the prayers that were not spoken of, Heavenly Father. 
Lord, you hear and you know all things. And we trust, Lord God, that you are still moving and speaking on our behalf, even beyond this time of prayer, Lord God. I thank you for the revelation you give every single person on this call. I thank you that you are taking us deeper, that you will surprise us, Lord. Lord, let June be a month of surprises, not even just June, Lord, let these next few days, let it, let us begin to see the transition and shift into where you're taking us, Lord, that we will have encounters, that there will be testimonies, that we will be excited, we will be surprised, Lord God, that we will be on fire and we will testify of your goodness, not just because of what you do, but Lord, because of who you are, Heavenly Father, and you being faithful to us, Lord God, in any season, all the time, you are always faithful. You do not change, and we need to remember that. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, and I, and I just speak blessings upon every single person on this caller who listens to the replay, that they have an amazing day, that you utilize all of us as your vessels, Heavenly Father, however that may look. We are being used for your glory, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So thank you all for joining. Uh, we will be meeting tonight on Zoom to continue to talk about um, the book, Deliverance from Demonic Covenants and Curses, and to allow the Holy Spirit to um, take us whatever wherever direction he desires to take us. Um, just a heads up for June, uh, we'll be reading... First John, Second John, and Third John, and so we'll be meeting on those books, and they aren't long at all. Um, the longest one is the is First John, but um, the Holy Spirit has just been highlighting the importance of intimacy and fellowship, and those three books written by John the Beloved, who God, you know, he truly loved. Um, we want to make sure we get back into alignment with that, and so. I'll, I'll post reminders and stuff like that, but just, um, you know, if you like to read ahead, if you like to, you know, ponder upon things, it's just a heads up that for June, we will be re reading and meditating on first John, second John and third John. And so, um, yeah, I hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank you for joining me. Um, and if anything comes up, feel free to reach out. Um, you can t reach out the WhatsApp. If you have my personal number, text me, or um, you can email me, whatever works for you. But definitely, please, 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 um, yeah, just stay planted, stay connected, and stay hopeful. And just know that God is doing something on your behalf. So I love you all, and I just have a wonderful day. Bye.